Hello and welcome to the Spink podcast. Today we're going to talk about the Chartwell collection of Great Britain Lining Grave Part 1. And this is a collection we've been very proud and indeed honoured to have been instructed to sell on behalf of the, the Chartwell company. The sale is going to be held on here at Spink on the 29th of June 2011 in our galleries in Southampton Row. And just as a little sort of intro on, on the, the collection itself, it was put together by um, a man called Sir Humphrey Cripps and he was essentially the uh, custodian of the collection. He did all of, the, all of the buying and he clearly had an eye for quality, rarity, uh, hence there's so many great pieces in this collection which has been very private for many, many years. And so we'll start with some of the lots and the first section of the sale is the Treasury Competition and this is from 1839 and the Treasury Competition was essentially a, a competition to try and find a new design for postage stamps. And lots 105 and 106, these were by a guy called James Chalmers and unfortunately none of these designs were ever used. We, as we now know, the Penny Black was uh, the first, world's first postage stamp. But these were just ideas of what and how they could be used. So 1005 and 1006, as I say, by James Chalmers. And they're both very conservatively estimated at 10 to 12,000 each. Then we move on to proofs and essays in the catalogue. And one of the highlights in this section is a proof by Heath. And this is DP13 as listed in the specialised catalogue. Uh, this is a a proof of the penny black itself and this is estimated at 120 to 150,000. Um, it's one of probably two or three in private hands so a very rare opportunity to actually have one of these. Then we move on to the penny black section and we start here with lot 1050 and this is a, an imprimatur of the penny black so this is if you like the first sheet that was printed of the penny blacks from the printing plate and this example has, actually has the plate number in the lower left corner and it's plate number one before hardening and this is estimated at 120 to 150,000. An incredibly rare imprimatur and one of only two in private hands. Then we move on to covers in the Penny Black section and we have a first day cover. Now this is the 6th of May 1840, which is the first day of usage for the Penny Black. And what's unusual about this cover is the, the stamp is actually used on the reverse to use it as a wafer seal to close the envelope, if you like. So it clearly demonstrates that the first postage stamp, um, even the postmasters weren't particularly sure on how they should be used. Then we have in plate two sec section of uh, the Penny Blacks, um, one of my favourite pieces in the, the collection is the plate number two corner marginal uh, penny black used on cover. Uh, it's used on the 13th of May, has huge margins all round and it's always been widely regarded as one of the most beautiful penny blacks on cover in existence. Now this should cause a lot of excitement in the room and we've very conservatively estimated it at 150 to 200,000. Then we move on to the 1840 Tuppany Blues and the first lot in this section is 1155 and this is um, a mint example without gum but what makes it so special is it has the plate number number one in the top corner. The Tuppany Blues were printed from plates one and two and this has the plate number one in the top right corner and is unique in private hands. And this again is very conservatively estimated at 20 to 25,000. Also we have uh, lot 1183 and this is a, a bisected um, Tuppany Blue on cover. This, so this is paying the penny postage rate by cutting the stamp in half. Uh, presumably they had, didn't have a stock of pennies at the time. Um, and it's, there's very, very few of these known and they come to the market very, very rarely. Then you have the 1864 to 79 pennies and these are the perforated pennies and the star item in this section is, must be the, the block of 12 plate 225 
and this is lot 1459 and this is probably the largest known block uh, with, with plate number. We had a, a block of 18 some years ago at Spink um, but as I say this is the largest known multiple with plate number and this is estimated at 20 to 25,000. Then we move on to lot 1472 and this is in the 1870 halfpenny section and 1472 is a complete set of the 15 imprimaturs. Um, each of these again has the corner plate number and this, is, this set is unique in private hands, very sought after. And then we also have uh, various blocks and singles of, of this stamp as well. Following on from the 1870 halfpennies, we have the 1860-73 to 73 halfpence. And the first lot in this section, 1492, is a strip of four from the right of the sheet of the unissued rosy mauve colour. And singles of these are very rare, but to have a multiple is even, be is even better. We also have in the unissued but issued rosy mauve um, a, a fantastic pair with the plate number in the corner and this is lot 1496 last sold in 1987 and this is estimated at 8 to 10,000. We then have a very important multiple which is on the Dr Perkins blue paper and this is in perforate and it's a block of eight but it also has the OPPC error which um, is a, an error in the printing so the C appears as an O. So thank you for watching and hopefully looking through the catalogues there'll be something for everybody and we hope to very much see you in the auction room or online on our Spink Live bidding system and we look forward to seeing you on the 29th.